Hello everyone. Am I audible? Um, my name is David Wanjau. I work for FIPS Africa, which is stands for Farm Input Promotions Africa. And can to introduce myself is that um, I come from a, an entrepreneurial background. Although my training is uh, from a research uh, background. Um, and with FIPS, I've been key to developing uh, a system of village-based entrepreneurs or agents that actually deliver services to farmers. Um, and we've been working on that project for the last uh, two and a half years. And I'm going to talk about, about uh, more about scaling adoption using those different technology, different uh, methodologies that we are using at FIPS Africa. And uh, because of time, I'm going to rush. And in FIPS Africa, we believe in five pillars that are key to adoption and impact on any technology. And the first important thing is you need to know what the farmers need. You need to do a good assessment of what the farmers need because it's very important because you have to give farmers something which is relevant to them. Uh, so you need to actually, once you understand the need and then you, you have technologies or innovation that address those needs, very important. And then the second thing which is, uh, and we call it more technology approach, is because different farmers will have different needs. Based, based on agroecological differences, or where they come from, cultural differences, which is very important. Um, and sometimes the more technology approach diversifies the risk for farm. Um, because if you're having a variety of things you're, you're promoting than one, maybe variety, maybe it's maize or beans. So if you give them options, you have pigeon pea, you have cassava, you're promoting chicken and other things. If one thing fails, then the other one might work. And the farmer is still will have the food security and they're able to actually adopt one of those technologies that work for them best. Uh, the other thing which is very important is the partnership with the public and private sectors. It's very key. And in Kenya, we are trying to, and in Tanzania, both, both countries we're working on, we are trying to establish very good linkages and partnerships with the private sector that are supplying us with seeds and also the research institutions that are developing new technologies and new food varieties and we are able to disseminate them to farmers. Um, the fourth component, and which is very critical to, the, to our approach, is what we call the village-based agents. And these agents are more for entrepreneurs at the village level. They are self-employed. We don't give them any incentives or stipends. What they, what, how they make the money is through provision of services to farmers and input, and they charge a fee. So that's uh, their key motivation actually reaching more farmers. Um, the last approach uh, that we're using, uh, the, which is the fifth pillar, is what we call a whole village approach. A whole village approach is, um, in Kenya from our, our understanding and experience, is that we have realized that um, if we work with groups, some of these groups we normally have the elite people in the society, or maybe the retired teachers, the retired civil servants, and which is very okay, but most of the time, the poor smallholder farmers are not in those groups. So how do you benefit these farmers? And that's why we have developed a whole village approach. And this is where you, you go house to house, and you involve all the farmers in the community through few days. Very important, that's how we, and these village decisions, they are very critical to that because they're based at the village, and one village based advisor would be working in two or three villages, and they're able to there are people who are known by the farmers, and they can access them easily. Uh, just to mention about our partnerships and with the private sector, give us maybe the inputs and the seeds and weekly demand for their products. And we also do so. We are also benefiting the private sector in actually getting a demand for their products. Uh, with the research institution, we normally get their improved technologies or uh, improved varieties, and then we disseminate them easily. Um, then we're using the village-based agents. So we are creating employment at the village level. And the VBs are very key to providing impact to the farmers. And because they are there in the village, even after we leave, then it's easy for them to continue providing services and advisory services to farmers. And 
allowing more adoption in the future. And also with the donors um, who facilitated us most with funding. And recently we've been very keen on creating very good bonds with the government and involving them in all our projects. That is the Ministry of Agriculture and also the local administration because they're very key um, in most places. Uh, just to summarize how our scale operates, we have a regional coordinator which is abbreviated as RC, and this guy manages five to six district coordinators in a network. And each district coordinator will be managing around 15 to 20 village based agents. And these agents will be working with around 200 to 500 farmers. That's how we are scaling. And nowadays we have noticed some development with our VBA because they realize that some, they're not reaching some villages. So the VBAs are also now recruiting what we call sub VBAs or vice VBAs as you may call them. Um, and just to brief you on who are the VBAs, you know, these are the people who are known by the farmers, they're young, they're hardworking, entrepreneurial, honesty, and they're self employed. Um, and what they do is they will provide advice, they will lay demos, they will make sure that every farmer in the village has a small part of every technology that we are, we are providing. They will do uh, advisory services and some extension services like ticket vaccination, which is very key, um, um, and other services. So just to summarize also the whole village approach is that we normally have the VBS lay a mother demo at the village, where they invite the farmers, within the village, train them on best practices of farming, then each farmer walks away with a small farm and knowledge, because knowledge is very important. If you give people new technologies and you don't empower them in knowledge, then it might not be very effective. And then each farmer goes and tries on their own farm, which is very important to try. And once they try, if they like it, most certainly they want to try it again and in a large scale. So you increase more chances of adoption once a farmer can try in their own farm and they like the, the technology or they like the rich improved variety, so you increase those chances of, of success. Um, so this is just a summary of a mother demo in a village. Then you have each farmer trying in red, you can see some small demos, we call them baby demos. Each farmer has several of them. And that will depend on the varieties we are promoting of the technology. If we have maybe five meat varieties, each farmer will walk away with maybe 25 grams of each variety, and they try it on their own farm, they compare it with what they have, and they like it, they will certainly buy it. I'm oh, sorry. Well, this is a, a typical example of how we disseminate uh, technologies, and we're starting with an example of vaccination. Uh, Sweet potato vine, which was mentioned yesterday, and we have it's very easy to scale and to provide these things and multiply them and reach every farmer at the village. And you can see the impact. And you can have a very simple model where farmers, if you give farmers a vine, they, they give back in kind two or three vines, and you can reach more farmers. And they have multiplication sites within the village. So you have ready materials. Um, and this is just a a summary of uh, an evaluation done by Royal Institute, uh, Tropical Institute, and that shows how things have changed since uh, our approach working with the VBA. And you can see uh, at the moment, I think just to summarize that you have, with different crops or varieties here, we have maize, millet, sorghum. You can see the difference of uh, the farmers using these crops, and these are the fashions, I think, uh, my, my other presenter was talking about that every every technology have a very different skill for adoption. And just at the table below uh, the corner, you can see that these are the food secure months that we non, uh, in non feed areas. They are, they are almost six at present. And in feed areas, you have almost every month they have something because of these multiple technologies that are working throughout. Um, before I, sum, I summarize, I wanted to actually uh, bring an understanding of what fits, and we think that these are the factors very critical in, uh, that affect adoption. One is the people, we need to understand them, the risk of and affordability, that that's the way we use the small part. Farmers can afford them, and they can be able to try at a low risk. Um, 
And then something of addressing farmers' needs is very important and also having incentives for the agents that are very important. And, um, and also being able to actually have multiple needs, which actually very important, you give farmers choice and opportunity. Um, just to give an example of maybe chicken, if, before you promote even whole pox vaccine, you need to understand the first key thing is that farmers are suffering from predation of their chicks. So if you can cover that and we are helping farmers with painting of the chicken and so that at least they keep their chicken safe. And then the second thing, which is very important, is protect them against Newcastle disease. So you first of all start with the most pressing needs of the farmer, and then you improve with, other, with bring other technologies along. And the same will happen with uh, maize. You find some, some areas people are planting four or five seeds in one plant and having poor spacing. So that's the most critical part. You empower them with information, with knowledge. Then you know you can bring uh, good varieties of seeds. Um, uh, this is just an example of a, a simple plan of our VBA. They're able to just have an incentive. Like on the vaccination, they can have three shillings margin per bird vaccinated, and most VBAs will vaccinate a thousand birds in a month. So that's at the, in Kenya, shilling that's around 3,000, which is given maybe to around um, maybe 28 or 30 dollars. This is an example of just an uh, income profile of our VBA from different activities. And a happy farmer who has changed from poor spacing and a lot of seeds from one hole and now is planting new varieties. Thank you very much. Thanks, David. Thank you very much. So your model is